He found evidence of deliberate burial in a very complicated, difficult cave system, which yeah. you can hardly access. Half a million years ago is pre-anatomically modern human. Deep within the sands of Egypt, something extraordinary has been uncovered. It involves a lot of things. Yeah, it's not just one single thing, it's a system. There's evidence that exists now. I mean, modern some modern researchers whose work has been buried or suppressed, I think we're getting very close. Something that challenges our understanding of ancient civilizations and could rewrite history as we know it. If you were to discover something older than that, you'd be very famous. You know, it's like, it's like they really looked hard. What exactly did they find hidden in Egypt? And why is it causing such a stir among experts? There's hieroglyphs that depict a history of Egypt that goes back far longer, maybe even 30,000 plus years ago, but archeologists dismiss it because they think that that's mythical. It's all about that there's a lot of physical evidence of an advanced civilization from far, far, far longer ago. In 1912, a German archeological team led by Ludwig Borchardt made one of the most iconic discoveries in the history of Egyptology, the bust of Nefertiti. Unearthed in the ancient city of Amarna, this limestone core sculpture covered in painted stucco has become a symbol of ancient Egyptian beauty and artistry. The bust stands at about 1.6 feet tall with a face that is almost perfectly symmetrical, a quartz pupil inlaid in beeswax making her right eye appear black while the left eye socket remains untreated, adding to its enigmatic charm. The discovery took place in the workshop of the sculptor Thutmose, where Borchardt and his team were conducting a systematic excavation. The bust was found amidst other unfinished works, suggesting it might have been a model or a study piece, rather than a finished artifact intended for public display. The delicate craftsmanship and realistic depiction of Nefertiti's features instantly captivated the world and brought to life the image of a queen whose influence and beauty had become legendary. Nefertiti, whose name means the beautiful one has come, was the great royal wife of Pharaoh Akhenaten, who is best known for abandoning traditional Egyptian polytheism in favor of worshiping the Aten, the sun disk. This radical shift to monotheism and the establishment of a new capital at Amarna make this period particularly intriguing for historians and archaeologists. However, the discovery of the Nefertiti bust has been shrouded in controversy from the start. Shortly after its unearthing, it was shipped to Germany, where it has been on display in various museums, most notably the Neues Museum in Berlin. The bust's presence in Germany has sparked a long-standing dispute between German and Egyptian authorities with Egypt repeatedly demanding its return, arguing that the bust was removed illegally under the guise of a misleading excavation report. The dispute intensified in the early 21st century with high-profile campaigns and diplomatic efforts aimed at repatriating the bust. Egyptian authorities claim that Borchardt deliberately obscured the bust's significance to ensure it would leave Egypt. The controversy surrounding its removal touches on broader issues of cultural heritage and the ethics of archaeological practice, raising questions about the legitimacy of historical artifacts acquisition and the responsibilities of modern museums. Nefertiti herself remains an enigmatic figure. While some scholars suggest she was of royal birth, possibly the daughter of Ai, a later pharaoh, Others propose she might have been a foreign princess. Her role extended beyond that of a typical queen, as she is often depicted in positions of power and worship, suggesting she played a crucial role in Akhenaten's religious reforms. Some theories even suggest she may have ruled briefly as pharaoh after her husband's death, possibly under the name Nefer-Neferuaten. The Nefertiti bust, with its exquisite detail and serene beauty, serves as a powerful symbol of the Queen's influence and the artistic achievements of the Amarna period. It also provides valuable insights into the era's aesthetic values and the technical skills of ancient Egyptian artisans. 
The Joe Rogan experience has often ventured into discussions about ancient history and archaeology, with various experts weighing in on the significance of such discoveries. In one of the episodes, the significance of the Nefertiti bust was explored, talking about how it offers a glimpse into the sophisticated artistry and cultural richness of ancient Egypt. The conversation on the JRE emphasized the bus role in challenging our understanding of ancient Egypt. The show also touched on the advanced techniques used in creating the bust, suggesting that ancient Egyptian artisans possessed skills that were remarkably advanced for their time. If such an exquisite artifact has sparked so much intrigue and debate, what other secrets might lie hidden in the sands of Egypt, waiting to be discovered? Speaking of hidden treasures and monumental discoveries, let's talk about another groundbreaking find that has captured the world's imagination. What secret pathway was uncovered that could potentially lead us to the final resting place of the legendary Cleopatra? In 2022, a groundbreaking discovery was made by Kathleen Martinez, an archeologist from the University of San Domingo in the Dominican Republic at the ancient temple of Tapasiris Magna in Alexandria, Egypt. Martinez, who had been working at the site for over a decade, unearthed a four 300-foot-long tunnel buried beneath the temple. This tunnel, previously unknown to researchers, is believed by some to potentially lead to the long-lost tomb of Cleopatra VII, the last active ruler of the Ptolemaic Kingdom of Egypt. The tunnel, cut through layers of rock, showcases impressive engineering skills and a deep understanding of the local geology. Alongside the tunnel, Martinez's team found a wealth of artifacts bearing the names and images of Cleopatra and Alexander the Great. These included coins, statues, and pottery fragments, each adding a layer of intrigue to the site. Notably, the artifacts also included depictions of the goddess Isis, further tying the site to Cleopatra, who was closely associated with this deity in ancient Egyptian religion. The potential that this tunnel could lead to Cleopatra's tomb has sparked immense excitement in the field of Egyptology, drawing parallels to the monumental discovery of King Tutankhamun's tomb by Howard Carter in 1922. The discovery at Tapasiris Magna could have immense implications for our understanding of Cleopatra's life and death. Cleopatra VII, known for her intelligence, political acumen, and romantic liaisons with Julius Caesar and Mark Antony, has been a figure of enduring fascination. Despite her prominence in history, the exact details of her death and burial remain shrouded in mystery. According to historical accounts, after Cleopatra's defeat by Octavian, later Augustus, she and Mark Antony took their own lives. However, the location of her tomb has never been confirmed. Martinez's discovery provides a new perspective on this ancient mystery. The tunnel, with its length and the artifacts found within it, suggests a significant effort to conceal and protect whatever lies at its end. If it does indeed lead to Cleopatra's tomb, it could offer unprecedented insights into the last days of the Ptolemaic dynasty, the burial practices of the time, and Cleopatra's legacy. Comparisons to the discovery of King Tutankhamun's tomb are apartment Tutankhamun's tomb, found nearly intact, provided a wealth of information about Egyptian burial practices, art, and daily life during his reign. Similarly, the potential discovery of Cleopatra's tomb could fill gaps in our historical knowledge and correct or confirm long-standing theories about her life and death. The presence of artifacts bearing the names of Cleopatra and Alexander the Great further heightens the significance of this find. Alexander the Great, who founded the city of Alexandria, is another towering figure in ancient history. Moving on from Cleopatra's tomb, what could the presence of 142 dogs buried alongside a child tell us about the ancient society that left behind this puzzling scene? In the Fayum Oasis, 
located approximately 60 miles southwest of Cairo, archaeologists made a remarkable and enigmatic discovery. Unearthed within the ruins of an ancient fortress, the remains of an eight-year-old child were found, surrounded by an astonishing 142 dogs. This extraordinary find, dating back to the Roman period of Egyptian history, has intrigued and baffled scholars, prompting a range of theories about the significance of this burial and the relationship between the child and the dogs. The site itself, an ancient fortress in the Fayyam Oasis, has long been a focus of archaeological interest due to its strategic importance in the region. The discovery of the child and the dogs was made during routine excavations aimed at understanding more about the daily life and burial practices of the inhabitants of this oasis. The skeletons of the dogs, remarkably well-preserved, were found meticulously arranged around the child, suggesting a deliberate and perhaps symbolic act. One peculiar detail of the burial was the linen bag found wrapped around the child's head. This departure from traditional burial practices in ancient Egypt raises questions about the identity of the child and the circumstances of the burial. Additionally, traces of blue clay were found among the remains, a type of clay typically associated with ancient Egyptian reservoirs, indicating a possible link to water or flooding. On the Joe Rogan experience, this discovery was discussed, with the conversation focusing on the unusual nature of the burial and the potential symbolic meanings behind it. Rogan and his guests speculated about the role of the child and the significance of the dogs, emphasizing the mysterious and intriguing aspects of the find. The discovery of the child and the dogs has sparked considerable debate among archaeologists and historians. One of the primary questions is the nature of the relationship between the child and the dogs. In ancient Egypt, dogs were often kept as pets, used for hunting or employed as guards. Some scholars speculate that the child may have had a special role within the community, possibly as a priest or a figure of spiritual importance, which could explain the extraordinary nature of the burial. The inclusion of so many dogs could symbolize protection, loyalty, or companionship in the afterlife. Alternatively, the dogs might have been part of a sacrificial ritual intended to honor or appease the gods. The presence of the linen bag around the child's head is another weird aspect of the discovery. In ancient Egypt, linen was commonly used in mummification and burial rites but the specific use of a linen bag over the head is not well documented. This detail could indicate a unique funerary practice, possibly reserved for individuals of particular significance or those who met unusual deaths. The traces of blue clay among the remains suggest that the burial might have been linked to a catastrophic event, such as a flood. The Fayum region, known for its extensive irrigation systems and proximity to water sources, could have experienced flooding that led to the simultaneous death and burial of the child and the dogs. This theory is supported by the type of blue clay found, which is typically associated with water reservoirs and indicates a sudden, large-scale inundation. The presence of 142 dogs in a single burial raises fascinating questions about the beliefs and practices of the ancient Egyptians during the Roman period. Were these dogs seen as protectors or companions for the child in the afterlife, or was there a more complex ritualistic significance behind their inclusion? This discovery opens up new avenues for understanding the intersection of human and animal relationships in ancient societies. As we ponder the mysteries of this remarkable burial, we are left with yet another intriguing question. What could have driven the ancient Egyptians to mummify not just one or two, but entire groups of crocodiles? And what does this tell us about their religious practices and beliefs? In 2019, a team of archaeologists from the University of Jaén in Spain made a remarkable discovery in the Egyptian necropolis of Kubat el-Hawa near Aswan. 
The excavation led to the unearthing of a tomb filled with mummified crocodiles, shedding light on the ancient Egyptian practices of animal mummification and their religious significance. The tomb, carved into the cliffs overlooking the Nile, contained multiple crocodile mummies, each meticulously preserved, indicating a significant ritualistic purpose. The tomb's contents were astonishing in both quantity and preservation. The crocodiles, ranging from juvenile to adult, were carefully wrapped in linen and sometimes adorned with amulets. The discovery included not only complete crocodile mummies, but also individual crocodile skulls and other body parts, all treated with the same care given to human mummies. This find provided a unique window into the religious and cultural practices of ancient Egypt, specifically those associated with the worship of the crocodile god Sobek. The mummification of crocodiles is directly linked to the worship of Sobek, a prominent deity in ancient Egyptian religion. Sobek, depicted as a man with the head of a crocodile, was revered as the god of water, fertility, and power. He was believed to control the waters of the Nile and, by extension, the fertility of the land and the prosperity of the people. Temples dedicated to Sobek were often situated near water sources where crocodiles were abundant, and the animals were kept in these temples as living representations of the god. On the Joe Rogan experience, this discovery was discussed in the light of the cultural and religious significance of animal mummification in ancient Egypt. The discovery of mummified crocodiles shows the lengths to which ancient Egyptians went to honor their gods, including the complex and labor-intensive process of mummifying large reptiles. This practice involved the careful evisceration, desiccation, and wrapping of the bodies in linen, similar to the mummification process for humans. The presence of these mummies suggests their role in religious ceremonies and as offerings to gain Sobek's favor. The crocodile mummies also reveal the economic and social structures that supported these religious practices. The resources required to capture, maintain, and mummify crocodiles indicate a well-organized system, likely funded by temple economies and supported by the labor of priests and other temple workers. This suggests that the worship of Sobek and the associated rituals played a significant role in the local economy and community life. The crocodile mummies also offer insights into the symbolic and protective functions these animals served in ancient Egyptian beliefs. Crocodiles were both feared and revered creatures, embodying the dangers of the Nile and the protective power of Sobek. By mummifying crocodiles, the ancient Egyptians sought to harness this power and ensure the favor of Sobek, particularly in matters related to fertility and protection against natural threats. But what about one of Egypt's most iconic monuments, the Great Sphinx? What secrets does this colossal statue hold, and how does it continue to captivate our imaginations thousands of years after it was carved from the Giza Plateau? The Great Sphinx of Giza, one of the most iconic monuments of ancient Egypt, has long captivated scholars and the public alike. Traditionally, Egyptologists have dated the Sphinx to approximately 2500 BCE, attributing its construction to the Pharaoh Khafre during the Old Kingdom period. However, this dating has been challenged by an alternative theory proposed by geologist Dr. Robert Schoch and researcher John Anthony West, based on evidence of water erosion. Schoch and West's theory first presented in the early 1990s, suggests that the Sphinx is much older than the conventional timeline suggests. Their argument is grounded in geological evidence indicating that the Sphinx has been subjected to significant water erosion, which they believe could only have been caused by prolonged exposure to heavy rainfall. This type of erosion, known as precipitation-induced weathering, involves the gradual wearing away of rock surfaces by rainwater, which creates distinctive vertical fissures and rounded profiles. The key evidence for Schoch and West's theory 
lies in the deep, weathering patterns observed on the body of the Sphinx and the surrounding enclosure. Unlike the typical wind and sand erosion seen on other ancient structures in Egypt, the weathering on the Sphinx points to extensive rainfall. Given that Egypt has been predominantly arid for the past 5,000 years, the last period of heavy and sustained rainfall in the region corresponds to the end of the last ice age, around 12,000 years ago, during a climatic phase known as the Younger Dryas. If the Sphinx does indeed date back to the Younger Dryas period, it would not only make it one of the oldest monumental structures on Earth, but also suggest the existence of a previously unknown advanced civilization capable of such monumental construction long before the rise of the dynastic Egyptians. This theory gained further credibility with the discovery of Gobekli Tepe in southeastern Turkey, an archaeological site dated to around 9,600 BCE. Gobekli Tepe consists of massive, intricately carved stone pillars arranged in circles and is considered the world's oldest known temple complex. The existence of such an advanced site from a similar time period supports the notion that sophisticated societies existed much earlier than previously believed. If a civilization could construct Gobekli Tepe, it is plausible that a similar or related culture could have built the Sphinx. Schoch and West's hypothesis challenges the established narrative of human history and the development of civilization. Traditionally, the rise of complex societies and monumental architecture is attributed to the Neolithic Revolution, which began around 10,000 BCE with the advent of agriculture. However, the Sphinx and Gobekli Tepe suggest that organized, advanced societies with the capability for large-scale construction might have existed during the Paleolithic period, indicating a much earlier timeline for human civilization's technological and social advancements. The theory of the Sphinx's greater antiquity has sparked significant debate within the academic community. Critics argue that the erosion patterns observed by Schoch and West can be explained by other factors, such as wind erosion or variations in the hardness of the limestone used in the Sphinx's construction. Traditional Egyptologists maintain that there is no substantial evidence to support a date earlier than the Fourth Dynasty of Egypt. They point to historical records, the archaeological context, and the alignment with other Old Kingdom monuments as supporting evidence for the conventional timeline. Despite these criticisms, the water erosion hypothesis has garnered attention and support from various researchers and enthusiasts. The theory tells us about the importance of interdisciplinary studies in archaeology, where geological evidence can provide critical insights into the dating and historical context of ancient structures. As we talk about the secrets of the Great Sphinx, let's get into the excavation of roughly 800 ancient tombs. What hidden tales lie within these tombs? What can they tell us about the ancient Egyptians who constructed them? In 2018, archaeologists made a groundbreaking discovery near the village of Lisht, located about 60 miles south of Cairo. Unearthed within this ancient necropolis were approximately 800 tombs, dating back around 4,000 years to the Middle Kingdom period of ancient Egypt. This era, spanning roughly from 2050 to 1710 BCE, is known for significant developments in art, culture, and architecture, making the discovery of these tombs particularly valuable for understanding this transformative period in Egyptian history. The tombs themselves are a marvel of ancient engineering and artistry. They feature intricate structures with walls adorned with ornate carvings and detailed hieroglyphic inscriptions. Many of these tombs include burial chambers meticulously designed to house the deceased and their belongings for the afterlife. The layout of the necropolis suggests a well-planned and organized burial site, indicating the importance of funerary practices in Middle Kingdom society. The tombs are arranged in a grid-like pattern, with each tomb reflecting the wealth and social status of its occupant. Some tombs are modest, 
with simple designs and fewer grave goods, while others are grand and elaborate, boasting multiple chambers and rich decorations. The discovery of these 800 tombs provides insights into the cultural and religious practices of the Middle Kingdom. This period is often regarded as a renaissance in Egyptian history, characterized by a resurgence of centralized power and a flourishing of the arts. The tombs reveal the elaborate rituals and beliefs surrounding death and the afterlife, which were central to ancient Egyptian culture. The intricate carvings and inscriptions found in the tombs offer valuable information about the daily lives, professions, and religious beliefs of the ancient Egyptians. Scenes depicting agricultural activities, hunting, and banquets provide a glimpse into the everyday activities and social structures of the time. The hieroglyphic texts often include prayers and spells intended to protect the deceased and ensure their safe passage to the afterlife, reflecting the deep spiritual beliefs of the Middle Kingdom Egyptians. The precious artifacts discovered within the tombs illustrate the importance of burial customs and the belief in an afterlife. Items such as amulets, jewelry, and pottery were carefully placed in the tombs to serve the deceased in the afterlife, indicating a strong belief in life after death and the necessity of providing for the deceased's needs beyond the grave. These grave goods also reflect the wealth and social status of the individuals buried in these tombs, offering a snapshot of the economic and social hierarchies of the Middle Kingdom. One of the most striking aspects of the tombs is their connection to royalty and elite members of society. Many of the tombs are believed to belong to high-ranking officials, priests, and members of the royal family. The grandeur of these tombs and the richness of the grave goods suggest that these individuals held significant power and influence during their lifetimes. The proximity of the tombs to the pyramids of Pharaoh Sinusret are high and Amenemhat. I further supports this connection to the royal and elite classes. Our journey into the ancient world continues with another astonishing find, a hidden chamber within the Great Pyramid of Giza. This concealed space holds many secrets that can reveal new insights about one of the most iconic structures in human history. In 2017, a team of international researchers from the Scan Pyramids project made a groundbreaking discovery using advanced scanning technology. They identified a hidden chamber within the Great Pyramid of Giza, also known as Khufu's Pyramid. This chamber, located above the Grand Gallery, measures approximately 30 feet, 9 meters, in length and remains inaccessible to archaeologists. The chamber was detected using a technique called muon tomography, which involves tracking the movement of muons, subatomic particles that are created when cosmic rays collide with atoms in the Earth's atmosphere. These particles can penetrate stone and provide an image of the pyramid's internal structure. The moon scans revealed a void that had previously gone unnoticed by traditional archaeological methods. The hidden chamber is situated above the Grand Gallery, a long, sloping corridor that leads to the King's Chamber. The exact purpose of this newly discovered space remains a subject of speculation among Egyptologists and researchers. Some hypothesize that it could be a relieving chamber designed to reduce the weight on the Grand Gallery below, similar to the five known relieving chambers above the King's Chamber. Others suggest it might have a more functional or ceremonial purpose yet to be understood. The discovery of this hidden chamber holds significant implications for our understanding of the Great Pyramid's construction and the architectural ingenuity of the ancient Egyptians. The Great Pyramid, constructed during the 4th dynasty around 2560 BCE, has long been a subject of fascination and mystery. It is the largest of the three pyramids on the Giza Plateau and was originally built as a tomb for the pharaoh Khufu, Cheops. One of the primary unresolved questions about the Great Pyramid is how such a monumental structure was constructed with the tools and technology available at the time. The identification of the hidden chamber adds another layer of complexity to this question. 
If the chamber does serve a structural purpose, it could provide new insights into the engineering techniques employed by the ancient builders. Moreover, the discovery could potentially lead to a re-evaluation of the internal layout and function of the pyramid. The known internal chambers and passageways, including the King's Chamber, Queen's Chamber, and the Subterranean Chamber, each have specific, and in some cases, still debated functions. The hidden chamber might offer clues that could help researchers piece together a more complete picture of the pyramid's design and purpose. In addition to its architectural significance, the hidden chamber might also hold clues about the cultural and religious beliefs of the ancient Egyptians. The pyramids were not only tombs, but also symbolic structures that played a role in the religious and cosmological worldview of the ancient Egyptians. Understanding the purpose of every part of the pyramid, including this newly discovered space, can shed light on the rituals and beliefs associated with death and the afterlife in ancient Egypt. On the Joe Rogan experience, this discovery was brought to the spotlight for its potential to revolutionize our understanding of ancient engineering and the Great Pyramid's construction. Rogan and his guests discuss the implications of using modern technology to uncover secrets that have been hidden for millennia, emphasizing the importance of such findings in rewriting historical narratives. In the course of human history, fragments of a biblical scroll alongside various relics have been unearthed in the desert caves of Israel. Over time, many mythical narratives have seized our imaginations, featuring tales of divine angels, colossal giants, and catastrophic disasters. While these stories may initially appear captivating and enigmatic, a closer examination unveils an alternative strand of human history that often goes unnoticed. One of these extraordinary narratives is embedded in the ancient Hebrew apocalyptic text, the Book of Enoch. Traditionally ascribed to Enoch, the great-grandfather of Noah, this ancient work unravels astonishing revelations concerning the origins of evil, the mysterious fallen angels, the mighty Nephilim, the cataclysmic flood, the prophesied Messiah, and the imminent end times. But how was this book discovered? In the latter part of 1946, or the early months of 1947, young Bedouin shepherds near the ancient settlement of Qumran on the northwestern shores of the Dead Sea now within the West Bank, encountered a peculiar incident. While tending to their flock, one of the shepherds accidentally dislodged a rock in a cliff crevice, producing a surprising and resonant sound. Intrigued, they ventured into the cave from which the sound emanated and stumbled upon a collection of sizable clay vessels. Seven of these vessels contained a treasure trove of leather scrolls and papyrus. These scrolls, later obtained by an antiquities dealer, eventually came into the possession of various scholars who determined their age to be over 2,000 years old. This discovery quickly captured the attention of both treasure hunters and archaeologists. Over the subsequent years, tens of thousands of additional scroll fragments were unearthed in ten adjacent caves known as the Qumran Caves, comprising a remarkable collection of between 800 and 900 priceless texts. The Book of Enoch stood out within this collection, segmented into five distinct books. The Book of Parables, the Book of Vigils, the Astronomical Book, the Epistles of Enoch, and the Dream Visions. Together, these books comprised a total of 100 chapters. The Book of Enoch is a compilation of monumental works, each delving into significant themes such as rewards, punishments, the end of the world, and the final judgment. Enoch's first work, encompassing chapters 6 to 36, predominantly covers themes such as the universe, the tree of life, Jerusalem, and angels, with the latter alluded to in Genesis 6 verses 1 to 4. These angels, as recounted, seduced human women, giving rise to the Nephilim, beings endowed with profound knowledge. The Nephilim, instrumental in the advent of a catastrophic flood, ultimately faced annihilation. They were referred to as the Fallen and are often depicted as colossal, giant-like entities. 
The connection between the offspring of God and the Nephilim has produced diverse interpretations. Some contend that the sons of God are fallen angels who procreated with human women, a concept found in the non-canonical Jewish source, the first book of Enoch. While this interpretation finds acceptance in the first book of Enoch, portraying the Nephilim as giants consistent with their supernatural origin, theological concerns about angels or demons physically reproducing with humans have been raised. The second segment of the book of Enoch, known as the parables of the likeness, is an apocalyptic narrative centered on themes involving the Son of Man and the Ancient of Days. These ancient prophecies, resonating with the Book of Revelation in the Bible, align with biblical teachings. An astronomical book within the text also meticulously details the stars and their roles. At the same time, the section titled Dream Visions serves as a comprehensive prophecy spanning human history, from the past to the present and the future. It foretells events from the inception of time to its culmination in the final judgment. While the Book of Enoch does contain certain parallels with the Bible, it is not immune to contradictions. One significant discrepancy emerges in the reference to Noah within the Book of Enoch. Despite biblical teachings stating that Enoch ascended to heaven long before Noah's birth, this raises questions about how Enoch, supposedly residing in heaven, could know Noah and the flood events if he were the author of the Book of Enoch. Furthermore, in Enoch 10 verses 8 and 9, God attributes all corruption on earth to a demon named Azazel. These verses suggest that Azazel's influence has contaminated the entire planet, resulting in the commission of all evil. In contrast to Lucifer, commonly known as Satan or the devil in biblical teachings, Azazel is not identified. Satan is generally held accountable for worldly issues as the originator of sin, and other specific demons are not discussed in this context. The Book of Enoch also includes astronomical and meteorological descriptions that diverge from the Bible and contemporary scientific understanding. For instance, chapter 33 verses 1 to 4 suggests that Enoch meticulously mapped and numbered all the stars in the sky. However, according to Jeremiah 33 verse 22 in the Bible, counting the stars is impractical due to their vast number. Modern astronomers estimate approximately 100 million stars in the Milky Way alone, and there are countless galaxies, each with millions of stars. Another inconsistency is found in Enoch 41, where wind, snow, hail, and even the moon are portrayed as emanating from a wooden container in the sky. Such depictions are considered illogical, absurd, and inconsistent with scientific knowledge and biblical teachings. These disparities shed light on why the Book of Enoch was not included in the Bible. Now, let us turn our attention to a recent discovery in Egypt that illuminates the history of ancient literature. This significant discovery was outlined in a Journal of Egyptian Archaeology publication. It revises the origins of ancient texts and highlights individuals' profound dedication and creativity during that era as they endeavored to decipher the enigmas of life after death. As per Rita Lucarelli, an Egyptology curator at the University of California, Berkeley, the ancient Egyptians harbored a deep fascination for all aspects of life, perceiving death as the portal to a new existence. The recently unearthed text, known as the Book of Two Ways, is one of about 20 known copies in the possession of contemporary archaeologists. Notably, it is the oldest among them. Discovered inside a coffin that had largely escaped the attention of grave robbers and earlier generations of archaeologists, this intriguing find emerged during excavations at a burial pit in the Egyptian village of Deir el Bersha. Unlike modern bound books, this ancient text was not a standalone volume. Portions were inscribed directly onto the casket's interior. These inscriptions, preserved on two deteriorating cedar panels, featuring images and hieroglyphs, specifically reference the Book of Two Ways. Objects in the tomb have been dated to the time of Pharaoh Mentuhotep II, who arguably reigned over Egypt until 2010 BC. The researcher behind this study, Harko Willems, 
an Egyptologist from the University of Leuven in Belgium, explained in an interview that these coffin texts aimed to place the deceased within the realm of the gods. In this casket, which belonged to a high-status woman named Ankh, the instructions for the afterlife referred to her as he. According to Kakuni, an Egyptian art and architecture expert from the University of California, Los Angeles, rebirth in ancient Egypt, was predominantly linked with male deities. Consequently, deceased women had to be called he to align themselves more closely with Osiris, the god of the afterlife. However, Ankh's rendition of the Book of Two Ways contained intriguing signs of personalization. The poem suggests that Ankh might have encountered an initial obstacle in her journey, symbolized by a ring of fire. As the years passed, it is conceivable that she faced challenges like evil spirits, demons, and even earthly threats such as fire. Her defense against these adversities lay in the incantation she cast as a deceased individual, thankfully detailed in the accompanying materials. The maps within this book, and others like it, present a perplexing array of winding lines and enigmatic figures, symbols that defy modern interpretation. Some experts believe these depictions originated from images of life rather than death, and were meant to invoke rituals to revive gods or deceased humans. These texts were emblems of rebirth within the present world or another realm. In a separate discovery at the Saqqara burial ground, the Egyptian Antiquities Ministry uncovered a funerary temple associated with Queen Nit, situated near Pharaoh Tet's pyramid. Their discovery brought to light burial shafts housing remnants from Egypt's 18th and 19th dynasties, a remarkable 13-foot-long papyrus scroll encompassing Chapter 17 of the Book of the Dead was noteworthy among the findings. This intricate manuscript served as a comprehensive guide intended to assist the departed in navigating the complexities of the afterlife. The excavation also unveiled wooden funerary masks, a shrine dedicated to the god Anubis, statues, and ancient games intended for use in the afterlife. Delving into the mysteries of ancient texts, the Thule Papyrus, dating back almost 3,500 years, describes unidentified flying objects, UFOs, as shining disks that filled the sky, surpassing the sun's brightness. This ancient account, from around 1480 BC in ancient Egypt during Thutmose III's reign, gained notoriety in the 1930s. Alberto Tulli, the director of the Vatican Museum's Egyptian section, reportedly encountered a copy in a Cairo antique shop. While its authenticity has raised concerns, the text has intrigued ancient astronaut theorists. The Book of Thoth is another most recent finding in Egypt that is bound to leave you in awe. The Book of Thoth is a sacred and enigmatic text from ancient Egypt, purportedly authored by Thoth, the Egyptian god of writing and knowledge. Regarded as one of the most mysterious books in the annals of human history, it is said to encompass various spells. One of the spells purportedly grants the reader the ability to comprehend the speech of animals, while another provides the power to behold the gods themselves. Legend has it that whoever delves into the book's contents gains the knowledge to unravel secrets and becomes a master of the earth, sea, and celestial bodies. Originating from the Greco-Roman era, the Book of Thoth was named in homage to the Egyptian god Thoth, who was considered the patron deity of libraries, scribes, and writing. Thoth is equated with the Greek god Hermes, revered as the guide of souls. Both Hermes and Thoth are esteemed as founts of knowledge and wisdom, giving rise to Hermeticism. This philosophical tradition emphasizes the transcription of ancient revelations by the gods, encapsulated in a collection of manuscripts known as the Hermetic Corpus. These manuscripts evolved into an extensive collection of Egyptian and Greek wisdom texts, collectively known as the Hermetic Texts, with the Book of Thought being among the works found in this compilation. Structured as a dialogue between the instructor Thoth and two titled students, He Who Praises Knowledge and He Who Loves Learning, this work is believed to convey knowledge directly from the mouth of the god Thoth himself.
Covering a broad spectrum of topics, the Book of Thoth addresses rituals, temple construction, astrology, geography, and medicine. According to ancient Egyptian myth, the spellbook's first two pages hold knowledge, enabling the reader to understand animal language, achieve immortality, and perceive gods usually concealed from mortal sight. Purportedly, the book asserts that humanity occupies a position midway between angels and gods, with a specific duty to create objects of beauty akin to the divine. Claimed to house the secrets of the gods, the Book of Thoth is said to unlock tremendous magical power, enabling the casting of spells on earthly and celestial realms. Various interpretations abound, with some viewing it as an ancient alchemist's guide and others believing in its ability to predict the future. There are also proponents of the theory that the book comprises three distinct volumes amalgamated over generations. For an extended period, this book was lost, and its existence is traced through legends and stories surrounding its purported magical content. According to mythology, the book was initially concealed near Koptos at the Nile's foot, safeguarded within a series of boxes protected by guardian snakes. The Egyptian prince Nephera fought fiercely with serpents to obtain the book. However, as punishment for this theft, the gods took the lives of his wife and son, leading Nephera to commit suicide. He was laid to rest alongside the book. Fast forward a few centuries later. Ramses the Great, Pharaoh of Egypt, had a son named Zedna, a connoisseur of ancient texts and an exceptional magician. While other princes were occupied with hunting or leading their father's army, Zedna found his greatest joy in solitary study. His study extended beyond reading the oldest hieroglyphic writings to adeptly transcribing the hundreds of signs constituting the ancient Egyptian language. Moreover, Zedna was a master of magic, having gleaned his abilities from the most obscure ancient books, even those the priests of Ammonius could not decipher. One day, while immersed in the ancient scrolls of papyrus inscribed on both sides, Zedna stumbled upon the tale of another pharaoh's son, Nephera, who lived centuries earlier. Nephera was renowned as a great scribe and a wise magician who had read the Book of Thoth. This sacred book allowed its reader to cast spells on heaven and earth and understand the language of birds and beasts. Learning that the Book of Thoth was buried with Nephera in his royal tomb in Memphis, Zedna was determined to find it and absorb its wisdom. Turning to his brother Anaru for assistance, Zedna declared that life held no meaning for him without the book. Anaru agreed to join the quest, pledging to stand by his side through all dangers. The two brothers journeyed to Memphis and located Nephera's tomb. Upon entering the tomb, Zedna made his way to the central room, where the prince's lifeless body lay wrapped in linen bandages. Adjacent to him on the stone tomb, two spectral figures emerged, a charming young woman and a child, manifestations of the past. On Nephera's lifeless chest rested the Book of Thoth. At that moment, a charming woman led Zedna to commit heinous acts, including harming his children and humiliating himself before the Pharaoh. However, Zedna discovered the entire event to be an illusion orchestrated by the late Prince Nephera, at his request, and he returned the book to Nephera's tomb. Additionally, Zedna found the bodies of Nephera's wife and son, whom he buried and sealed in their tomb. The narrative later delves into the Egyptian belief that knowledge of the gods is not meant for humanity. It's worth noting that occultist Alistair Crowley also authored a book called The Book of Thoth, accompanied by a tarot deck he designed. Crowley claimed that Thoth had dictated the book and tarot card to him. The connection between the book of Thoth and the tarot is not surprising, given the widespread belief that the tarot originated in ancient Egypt. Some even argue that the book of Thoth is a collection of tarot cards rather than a traditional book or papyrus. Another manuscript, known as the Emerald Tablets of Thoth, is said to exist. It has been translated to identify its author as a priest-king named Thoth, 
who ruled the legendary city of Atlantis. These tablets, purportedly in existence for 36,000 years, contain a procedure for creating a philosopher's stone for transmutation. Thoth is often assumed to have been a scribe of the gods, and some even contend that ancient Egyptians believed the gods would cease to exist without Thoth's words. According to certain ancient writings, Thoth was the author of something of immense biblical importance to be unveiled by someone in his lineage. There may be references to the ancient Book of Spells believed to be buried in the City of the Dead next to Prince Nefkepta. While there is no evidence of its existence, some speculate that the elusive Book of Thoth might be hidden beneath the colossal paw of the Sphinx. Others believe it could be among the numerous ancient Egyptian papyrus scrolls currently undergoing translation. Though parts of these manuscripts are known to be connected to the Book of Thoth, the magic referenced in these texts is not conventional. Instead, it is believed that the book holds the key to understanding the world as it is, focusing on unraveling invisible phenomena like seasons, diseases, and the cycle of day and night. These ancient manuscripts also mention spells attributed to the Book of Thoth, which in reality are prayers rather than magical incantations. The scriptures allude to the notion that humans are midway between mortal and divine, aligning with legends. The mysticism of death and rebirth is also touched upon in these ancient texts, although the papyrus Book of Thoth and the Tarot are not explicitly referenced. One certainty remains, the contents of the authentic Book of Thoth remain unknown. Many believe that finding this book could usher in a perfect world. However, cautionary notes persist in ancient Egyptian myths about the Book of Thoth, portraying those who uncover it in stories facing misfortune and suffering. Attempting to read the Book of Thoth is said to incur divine punishment, as divine knowledge is deemed unsuitable for humanity. The question now is, would you dare to read something from this mysterious book? Overall, the discoveries in Egypt collectively offer profound insights into ancient civilizations, their cultures, and the shared human experiences that connect us across time. Each revelation contributes to the ongoing understanding of human history, informing our past and influencing the present.